Welcome to this video on the Atomic Automation AWS Lambda Integration Solution. In this video, we will explain the AWS Lambda integration and what it brings to the Atomic user community. AWS Lambda is a serverless, event-driven compute service that allows you to run code for almost any type of application or back-end service without provisioning or managing any servers. You can trigger Lambda from over 200 AWS services and software as a service, SaaS, applications, and only pay for what you use. We'll provide some technical insights so that the integration components are clearly identified and the deployment sequence is understood. We'll focus on the configuration of the agent and the design of the two core object templates, connections, and jobs. Finally, we'll run through a demo. Atomic Automation plays a central role in orchestrating operations across multiple environments, including the cloud. Atomic Automation synchronizes these processes with other non-cloud operations. By integrating AWS Lambda, we can centrally configure process automation in Atomic Automation and then trigger, monitor, and supervise everything in one place. Lambda processes can then be synchronized with all other environments routinely supported by Atomic Automation. With the Atomic Automation AWS Lambda Agent integration, you can invoke the Lambda functions directly from Atomic Automation. You use the Atomic Automation Lambda jobs to quickly and easily pass on the payloads and runtime parameters to the jobs on the AWS Lambda target environment. AWS Lambda's role is reduced to start the jobs. All other functions, especially those pertaining to automation, are delegated to Atomic Automation. This means that we don't have to log into the AWS Lambda environment and keep on refreshing it by ourselves. Atomic Automation manages all the execution and monitoring aspects. Atomic Automation lets us build configurations with intuitive interfaces like drag and drop workflows and supervise them in simple dashboard tools designed natively for operations. Statuses are color-coded and retrieving logs is done with a basic right-click. From an operations perspective, Atomic Automation highly simplifies the configuration and orchestration of Invoke Lambda jobs. Externalizing operations to a tool with a high degree of third-party integration means we can synchronize all cloud with non-cloud workload. Using various agents and job object types, we can build sophisticated configurations involving multiple applications, database packages, system processes like backups and data consolidation, file transfers, web services, and other on-premise workload. A conventional architecture involves two systems, the atomic automation host and a dedicated system for the agent. The agent is configured with a simple INI file containing standard values, system, agent name, connection, and TLS. When we start the agent, it connects to the engine and it adds two new objects to the repository, a connection object to store the AWS Lambda connection parameters, such as endpoint, credentials, and so forth, and a job template designed to trigger invoke Lambda jobs. Let's assume we're automating for four instances AWS Lambda. We create a connection object in Atomic Automation for each instance by duplicating the con template for each of these instances. Lastly, we create invoke Lambda jobs in Atomic Automation for each corresponding process in AWS Lambda. The Atomic Automation jobs include the connection object based on the target system. When we execute the jobs in Atomic Automation, it triggers the corresponding process in AWS Lambda. We're able to retrieve the successive statuses and finally generate a job report. In Atomic Automation, this Invoke Lambda job can be incorporated in workflows and integrated with other non-cloud processes. The procedure to deploy the AWS Lambda integration is as follows. First, we download the integration package from Marketplace. This package contains all the necessary elements. We unzip this package, which produces a directory containing the agent, the INI configuration files, and several other items, like the start command. We use the appropriate INI file for our specific platform. AWS Lambda is a standard atomic agent. It requires at least four values to be updated. Agent name, 
atomic system, JCP connection and TLS port, and finally TLS certificate. When the agent is configured, we start it. New object templates are deployed. We create a connection to the AWS instance which has access to invoke lambdas. For this, we use the template con object which we duplicate as many times as we need. The con object references AWS Lambda's REST API URL. Finally, we use the template Lambda job to create the jobs we need. We match this atomic automation job to the invoke Lambda job, reference the connection object and run it. We're able to supervise the jobs, generate logs, and retrieve their statuses. The job can then be incorporated into non-cloud workflows. We install, configure and start an agent to deploy the AWS Lambda integration. The agent is included in the AWS Lambda package, which we download from Marketplace. We unzip the package, which creates a file system agent slash Lambda slash bin that contains the agent files. Based on the platform, we rename the agent configuration file UCXJCIDX and set a minimum of four values. The agent name, the AE system name, the host name and port connection to the automation engine's JCP, and finally the directory containing the TLS certificate. Finally, we start the agent by invoking the JR file via the Java command. The agent connects to the AE and deploys the object templates needed to support the integration, the con or connection object, and the invoke Lambda job template. In our demo, we will create a connection object. Once we have established the connection to the AWS Lambda environment, we'll create an invoke Lambda job. Finally, we'll execute and supervise the job. Let's start with the demo. First, let's have a look at the connection object. Connection objects contain all the parameters that the agent needs to establish the connection to the target AWS Lambda environment. Connection objects support all four authentication methods that are possible in AWS Lambda. In Credentials method, you select how the agent will authenticate. If you select AWS Credentials File Path, you must enter the profile name. AWS Profiles store multiple AWS credentials. Here you enter the name of the profile that contains the credentials for your AWS system and in Credentials File Path, you specify the location of the AWS Credentials file on the agent machine. The EC2 Profile Instance option lets you connect to an EC2 VM within an AWS Cloud application. In Profile Instance Name, enter the name of the profile available on the VM. Note that to use this option, you must have an EC2 Instance Profile. For instructions on how to set it up, please refer to the official AWS documentation. The secret access key is a private unique identifier of user accounts that is used to sign requests to AWS services. It is displayed to the user only during its creation. It consists of an access key and a secret access key. If you select this option, you must enter both. Finally, the external provider option allows you to set up single sign-on, SSO, with SAML using either a service or an identity provider. If you select this option, you must specify the following. The identifier of the AWS tenant. The URL that identifies the network address of the external authentication provider used to secure the application. Currently, only Azure is supported as external provider. Username used for SAML authentication when setting up Azure as your AWS identity provider. The password for the user used for SAML authentication. The Amazon resource name ARN of the account's principal. The Amazon resource name ARN of the role to be assumed by the user. The identity provider. Currently, only Azure is supported. If you are using a proxy in your environment, you can specify the proxy host name, port, username, and password in the proxy section. Let's have a look at an invoke Lambda job now. In connection, you select the Lambda connection object that contains the information to connect to your AWS Lambda system. In Lambda name, you either enter or select the name of the Lambda function that this job will invoke. 
Optionally, you can provide the payload with the parameters that you want to provide to the Lambda function as input. You can either enter the JSON here or you can define the path to the JSON file containing the attributes that you want to pass to the application. Make sure that the file is available on the agent machine. Host. The invocation type field identifies the Lambda function to be invoked. Depending on your selection here, you will have to populate different fields. You have the following options, request response, dry run, and event. Select request response if you want to trigger the Lambda function synchronously. This keeps the connection open until the function returns a response or times out. The API response includes the function response and additional data. With this option, you can specify the tail logs option. Check this box if you want to include the execution log in the response. The information is stored in the agent logs. In client context, specify client-specific information in the base64 encoded format. Usually, this will be in JSON format. Finally, the qualifier defines a specific already published version or alias of the function that this job will invoke. Let's execute this job. Let's open the resulting reports. First, the agent log is displayed. Here, you see the parameters used to run the job and the result of the execution. Let's switch to the report. Since we had selected the tail logs, additional information is added to the report. For example, the report indicates that the Lambda execution was completed in 1.7 milliseconds and that the build duration was the same. It also indicates the amount of time that will be added to the billing, the memory size, and the maximum memory it used while running. For example, if you select a dry run invocation type, the success response is returned without the actual response, which helps you save costs. However, the response indicates that the parameter values have been validated and that the user or role has permission to invoke the function. Here, we can see that the return success response is the HTTP 204 no content status response code, which indicates that the request has succeeded and that all the parameters are valid. Finally, if we select an event invocation type, the function is invoked asynchronously. Events are sent that may fail multiple times to the function's dead letter queue if one is configured. The API response only includes a status code. In this case, the status code INFO, Lambda Invocation Successful, indicates that Lambda has received the request. Thank you for watching this video.